Hello and welcome to the Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. That is the silly name we are giving our unboxing videos until we come up with or you come up with something better. Speaking of you coming up with something better, if you do have a better name for our unboxing videos, feel free to comment below and we'll definitely consider it. I'm okay with what we have now, but it's not the best. So I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. I'm hugely here answering your gaming and game night questions, but now and then we do do some additional content like this unboxing video. Today, I am going to be unboxing Immortals from Queen Games. See, my podcast co-host, Sean, is coming down from Hamilton tonight, and we wanted to play the game, and I hadn't opened my copy yet. I just got it on the weekend. So I thought this would be a good chance since I got to open it anyway. Why not open it in front of all of you? So for any of you watching live, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. Though I am recording this mainly for YouTube purposes, so I won't get to your questions till after I'm done the unboxing. But after that, if you get any questions, I will be happy to answer them. So here is the game we are opening. We're going to see how well this works on my lap. It is Immortals from Queen Games by Dirk Hen and Mike Elliott. Now the main reason I wanted this game is I love Cube Tower games. One of my favorite games of all time is Wallenstein, and one of my second favorite games is Shogun, which are basically the same games with two different themes. While Immortals is kind of the next step in that trilogy. It uses the same cube tower, and as far as I understand, some of the same mechanics. Now, the neat thing's supposed to be there's two sides of the board, the light and the dark, as you can kind of tell by the picture here that you got the dark dark and the light side. Well, when cubes or units are killed on one side, they go to the other side. That sounds really cool to me. To be honest, I don't know much more than that. So we're going to open this up and take a look at what's inside. That's what we got so far. I'll try to avoid the glare. There, this way, less glare, more glare. So we've got a punch board, rather large. Punch board looks like a player board. Already looks very different, I got to say, to Shogun or Wallenstein. Really nice art, though. Very cool fantasy art. Some more stuff to punch here. We got another large board. Looks like orcs and elves this time. But it'd be really neat, which I can't tell if you can, but these are puzzle cut, so I'm wondering if you can mix and match. So you got trolls and elves. Uh, we got halflings on this board with a bunch more punch outs on here. Way more tokens than were ever required in Wallenstein or Shogun. So we got some dwarves and halflings. I have to assume you can mix and match now since these aren't a light with a dark. Then we've got humans and necromancers. Uh, these ones actually are the other, the arts the different direction. Good job on Queen uh, doing what they can to get everything to fit on as few boards as possible. I dig that. Everything coming up in different angles. We got Night Elves. I think there's some WoW inspiration here. And Demons. Again, really digging the art. Fantastic art here. Really impressive. I have no idea what these numbers, one, two, three, six, all mean on the sides here. This part does look a lot like um, Wallenstein. Spots to put your cards, your province cards. Then we have the rather impressive map of the world. Which we have... A light side and a dark side. Okay, this is so big, I gotta kind of pan here and kind of see it. So you have the same world, the light and the dark side of both sides of the world. Nice lightning rift in the middle of there. On the back is just some graphics. We'll show it off quick, but at least it's cool. Got some nice pictures on the back. Fair enough. We have the thing I will be reading this afternoon, the rule book. Nice glossy. Thick paper, lots and lots of art and pictures and examples. It's always a good thing. Looks pretty impressive. Oh, looks good, looks solid. We'll keep flipping kind of at this angle. Oh, that didn't work. So we have a grand total of 16 pages. Not too bad for a Dirk Hen game. That's not that bad at all. Everything's nice and color coded. Queen's really good for that, where they color code different sections of the rule book. Then we have a ton of wooden bits. I'm not gonna bother opening this up. You got tons of wooden cubes. 
There's discs as well. I'm going to guess are in player colors. Then we have, of course, the Cube Tower. What makes these games famous? So you have the Cube Tower. Oh, there you go. Wasn't tipped open. Now we have a way for it to come out. So we have the Cube Tower. We have the base for the Cube Tower. And we have the top for the Cube Tower. Of course, the point in all these games is when there's a combat, you drop all your cubes in the top, and the ones that come out are the ones that survive. Then you can solo your units versus the enemy units. The neat part is the cube tower, I'm hoping you can kind of see this, isn't just a straight drop. There's all kinds of weird cutouts and stuff in there. So cubes get stuck in the tower. So you never know exactly when your units are going to come out. So you're going to toss them in there at the beginning of the game, usually toss 10 of each cube in the normal game. I'm not sure in this one. And then you don't know when those like reinforcements will show up. And it's a really neat combat system that's unique to these games. So that is the cube tower. I noticed it's got a much more creepy, you know, monstery look than the ones from Wallenstein or Shogun. Uh, they did stick to the clear, not the black, which is nice. So you can see across the board what comes out. At this point, I'm going to tip this forward a bit so you can kind of see how nicely organized. they got a nice box insert here with lots of room for all the different components. Nice touch. Always a fan of that. So now we're going to try to fit all this back in. So the only thing left in here are a couple sets of cards. So I'm going to move up a bit so I can flip through these cards. There should be province cards. I'm not sure what else we'll have. What I don't see, which is interesting, is any wooden bits for tracking money. So I'm guessing that's tracked by cardboard counters. I also don't see anything for building palaces, temples, or theaters, which is a big part of both Shogun and Wallenstein. Okay, so these are the province cards, it looks like. Yeah, so you have Tree Home. It's an example of one on the dark side and Tree Home on the light side. And I'm not sure what the two symbols mean, but obviously they have this has the same stats on both sides. Oh, and then you have tree home both sides, which that's interesting. There might be a way to actually, if you own both sides of something. So it goes through, same thing for every province. So you have Outland, there we go. So we have Outland, Dark Side, Outland, Light Side, Outland, both. And it looks like the stats do swap. So Outland, the dark side has five lightning bolts and one coin, whereas the light side is one lightning bolt, five coins. You can kind of see the difference there. So I don't think there's any reason for me to go through this entire deck, but that is a rather thick province deck. Lots of provinces there. The one thing I do know about these games, I don't want to shuffle this because it's not something that gets randomized. Now, the original Wallenstein and Shogun are an action selection game where you use cards to select what actions you want to do based on your provinces. And there's also an auction to determine turn order. So I'm guessing that's what some of these other parts are, but I don't actually know. So more province cards, including, okay. Well, they're the same back, but they're not province cards. So I have a ton of blanks. No clue. I'm guessing that's for bluffing, saying you're going to do something in a province and you don't do anything there. Having not read the rules, I couldn't tell you for sure. Then we have these, which possibly special events. I'll flip through a couple of them. Not sure exactly what these ones mean. Having not read the rules. Lots of icons. The icons look simple enough. Art's nice enough. So you get a small deck of those. Then we have a bunch of cards with hourglasses on them that literally say one through 10. So hourglass, one, two, three, four, five, one through 10. Hourglasses on the back. And that is it. That's everything that comes in this set, this box. So I gotta say compared, thinking off the top of my head, comparing this to Wallenstein and Shogun, it looks like there's a lot of stuff that is not in this game that was in those games. So it'll be very interesting to see the differences between the two. So here's everything kind of back in the box. I just shoved it in wherever it fit. For now, we're going to wrap this up. Everything should fit back in fine. After I'm done that, you don't have to watch that. 
Uh, I'm going to go read that rule book so that we're ready to play this weekend. And then uh, I'm sure if you listen to our podcast, which we record right here on Twitch every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, you can hear my and Sean's thoughts on Immortals from Queen's Games. Uh, if you follow us on YouTube, you'll also see a live version, or sorry, uh, edited version of this video and our podcast can be found there. Uh, this um, unboxing usually go live on Mondays. Podcast goes live Sunday at 2 a.m. If you prefer to listen, you can also subscribe to our podcast. That's Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. This has been a cardboard coat check where we unboxed Immortals from Queen Games. Thank you for joining me. <laughs>